Hello guys, today we are going to see how to remove a broken implant and how to place new implants. Let's go for it. Hello, how are you doing? My name is Juan Lara, the DLRF surgery. I'm with my partner in crime, Dr. Montpel. We are going to see today the big headache, the big nightmare that we have when we have a broken implant. First of all, we need to know why the implants are breaking. Why do we have a uh, broken implant? What happened? And knowing how this happened, we will know how to avoid it in the future. So, why can an implant break? An implant can break uh, because an excess of forces in the connection. And why this is happening? When we have three situations, first one is when we have a tilted implant. The implants should be straight, should be axial to the forces. They shouldn't be tilted. If we have a tilted implant, uh, the forces are going to hit in one side and we can have overload in the connection. And when we have an overload in the connection, it's too much that we start making little fractures and then it will have a fracture of the implant and we, we will have a huge problem. Second reason is when we use a not very good connection. As you all know, we used to use in the, in the past hexagonal external connections, which are not very good. Now we are using internal connections. The best connections nowadays is the internal conical connection. Those are the best. Why? Because they have such a great adaptation to the implant that we are not going to have any gap at all in between the implant and the, and the abutment. That is really important. Having a good connection is really important to have the best outcome in the future. If you take a look to this video where we can see how the connection moves when we apply a lot of forces in one side, you will see that is when we don't have a good connection, there is liquid going inside and outside of the connection. What does that mean? That liquid usually is saliva with pathogens, bacteria. We have to avoid that liquid going inside and outside of the connection that will lead us to have bone resorption. So if the connection is conical and is really good, we won't have that problem. So we always have to look for good connections. And the third reason is when we have perimplantitis. So the problem with perimplantitis is that we have a bone loss and all the forces are going to go straight to the connection because we have a liver and that is going to apply all the forces in the connection and we have a, a, a fracture of the implant. And this situation is really, really bad. It's a really nightmare for us because removing an implant is really difficult. There are four ways to remove an implant. The first one is with a, a removal kit uh, that uh, you have to screw the, the, the abutment into the implant. Therefore, you need a connection of the implant. So we are going to, to screw it and then the implant will go out, supposedly out of the bone. We have two problems for that. First thing, we, we need an implant with connection. So if the fracture is below the connection, we cannot use this method. And the second problem is that sometimes that bone is really cortical, for example, in the mandible. If we have a really, really cortical bone, that implant is going to be impossible to, to unscrew it with the, with the kit removal. Maybe in the maxilla is going to be easier, but not in, in the mandible. Sometimes, another times, if that bone is not such cortical, it will be possible. Another way to remove an implant is just using the trefling bore. The trefling bore, as you know, it cuts only in the sides and it gives you a cylinder which is not cutting. So what we need is a trefling that has to be one millimeter at least bigger than the implant. What does that mean? That if we have a four millimeter diameter implant, we will need an internal diameter trefling to be five millimeters. That means that the external diameter trefine is going to be six millimeters. Imagine the bone defect that the trefine is going to lead us after using it. It's going to be a hole of six millimeter, which is going to be a really big bone defect. So, um, well, 
it has its points. Third way to remove a, an implant is just using the classical burr. The problem with the classical burr is that uh, even the bone loss is going to be even bigger than with the trephine. So remember, we went from the easiest and most traumatic way, which is with the uh, kit uh, extraction kit for the implants, the second, the trephine, the third, the burr, and the fourth, which is the, the method we usually use when it's not possible to use the kit removal, we, use, uh, we are using a different way that we are going to see. Okay, guys, if you don't know how to do this curry technique, take a look at this video and subscribe because we will explain you how we fix this case in the next video. See you soon.